Welcome to Escape This Podcast, a show that's a mix between tabletop role-playing and escape room puzzles. It's the kind of game Gary Gygax might have developed if he'd lost all his dice, but he had a padlock and a book of ciphers. Each episode, our puzzle master Danny takes guests through a room of her own devising, and this week I will be playing, but I won't be playing alone. Our guest this week is Nick, a different Nick than previously. <laughs> yes, I'm definitely not your brother. Now, Nick, you've listened to a lot of episodes, but you also played a lot of escape rooms yourself as well, haven't you? I have played some escape rooms. Some? Yes. Just embrace it. Say a lot. Uh, many. You're many. a master. These people don't know. I have, I, yes, you don't know, and yeah. I have played many escape rooms. Wonderful. I am, I'm the greatest escape roomer in the, this corner of the table. Beautiful. <laughs> Uh, so um, you should be fairly comfortable with how the whole thing works, but just for people who aren't, Danny, basic rules running through a room? So you treat it exactly the, with the reverence that you would treat a normal escape room. You don't climb on the furniture and you don't break stuff. This one is not quite an escape room, so oh. be ready for a different set of goals. Are we ready to begin? Let's go. Look, everyone warned you that watching a courtroom proceeding wasn't going to be as exciting as it sounded. I mean, on the off chance you got into something cool like a mafia bust instead of some business embezzlement case. From the back row of the audience, it's not like you'd get to see any deranged murderers or gruesome exhibits anyway. So this is probably a total waste of time. Well, not quite. You have managed to work your way into the coolest sounding trial that your city has ever seen. Ooh. It's a celebrity murder trial. Ooh. The famous boxer, Waylon Havanos stands accused of killing his manager, the millionaire Shane Triscoll, over a business dispute. Now, Whalen thought Triscoll was favouring another client over him, a bigger celebrity boxer, THE celebrity boxer, Ooh. Philadelphia Glenn. Philadelphia Glenn. He is a giant of a man, and his name is known all over the world. Both of those boxers are sitting in this courtroom with you right now. Ooh. It's amazing. The case is scandalous, and the prosecutor is demolishing the defense. It's pretty clear the jury's already made up their mind. You, though, you're getting a funny feeling about this trial. It feels too one-sided. Obviously, real-life crime isn't like the movies, the whodunits where the police suspect the wrong person until the very last second. That's not how it actually goes. But seriously, the defense attorney's putting up no fight whatsoever. The judge is letting the prosecutor steamroll everybody who tries to get a word in. And even the witnesses for the defense seem to be making things worse for Waylon. <laughs> Philadelphia Glenn is on the witness stand right now, agreeing that Waylon was a jealous loser who hated Triscoll for favoring a winner. They have the machete that's allegedly the murder weapon, but they haven't even fingerprinted it. Sure, their reason was because Waylon was caught with it still in his hand <laughs> at the scene. But that's still suspicious, right? Yeah, by whose word? Even Waylon himself is quiet, resigned to his fate, not putting up much of a fight, and... Do you think he was paid to take a dive in this court case? <laughs> Ouch! <laughs> That's a pretty harsh one! <laughs> Look, it's like almost like he knows there's a conspiracy against him that's just too deep and he can't do anything about it. You close your eyes, deep in thought. What could you possibly do? You're just some random dudes in the back of the room. You've got no say and no power to change anything, and even if you did, the trial's well underway. It's not like you'd have time to go and dig up dirt on everyone involved in the case to find the true culprit. You squeeze your eyelids shut even harder, thinking so furiously until it feels like you're going to explode. Then at long last, you reopen your eyes, and your jaws drop. <gasps> you don't know how, but there's only one way to describe what you see. The entire courtroom is frozen. Ooh. The people have all turned into statues. All the voices from the front have fallen silent. You can still hear footsteps and murmurs outside the big double doors behind you, so something has happened to this room and this room alone. Was it you? Did the intensity of your emotions Freeze magic time? stuff? Uh, yeah. I'm pretty sure that's how it works. It's happened before, when I was a young boy <laughs> during a game of tennis. Well, I mean, if that's true and it was you, there's only one possible reason for it. Time stopped so you can get to the bottom of this. You can't see any other explanation. You have to solve this case without leaving the courtroom before time restarts itself, whenever that might be. <laughs> mm. Heart's racing, you stand up. 
None of the statue people take any notice of you, and you take a look around the room, taking note of anything that could possibly help. Starting with the double doors at the back, a long black stretch of carpet runs about two-thirds of the way out to the front of the room. On either side of it are several rows of audience seating. Mm -hmm. now, the front area is blocked off from the audience by a low barrier, but you can get over it easily. The front is where all the interesting stuff is. To your left is the defense, with Waylon Havanos and his lawyer sitting there looking grim. And to your right is the prosecutor standing up mid-question. I'm assuming they have little benches that they're sitting yeah. at. little benches. Against the right wall is the jury, and against the left wall, a stenographer sitting at her desk. Out the front is, of course, the judge and the witness stand, where Philadelphia Glenn is currently seated. In that front wall, there are two doors, one on either side of the judge and witness stand. Mm -hmm. You believe the left one leads to some sort of private judge's area, and the right one to the jury's deliberation room. And while most of the room is quite plain, there are a couple of decorations, if you can call them that. There's a large oval ornamental rug in the middle of the front half of the room. And on the walls, you can see a framed copy of the local constitution and a large flag, which must be brand new because it's still rolled up tight. You'd best get started. You may have magically stopped time, but you really can't say how long it's going to remain stopped. All right. Now, I know that in real life, you are not my brother, but I think for this entire time-stopping power... To work, we have to be twin brothers. We'll have to be twin boy detectives. Okay. <laughs> so we have, a, we have a crime to solve. We have a crime to solve. Are the double doors locked? No, those double doors at the back aren't locked, but there are people out there, and you don't really know what's going to happen if you open them and reveal this frozen room to should normies. We, should we test the twin paradox while we're here? Oh, that's true. I should. You stay in this frozen room. I'll go to space, <laughs> and we'll see who ages faster. Is there anything in this room you'd like to take a look at further? Why don't we start looking at this flag? Because I'm intrigued as to, the, as to what's going sure. on with the flag. So it's not sitting on the floor like you suspected. It's staff is sticking out of the wall at a 45 degree oh, angle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. It's rolled up around, around. that completely. Okay. It's also much too high for you to reach. And because it's rolled up, you can't see what the flag is a flag of. Okay. okay. Um, and the constitution is as normal as the constitution? It seems to be. I mean, it's an excerpt from it. They obviously couldn't fit the whole thing. And it's some local thing. It's not big and famous like the American Constitution. It's just a very long, dry document encased in a glass frame. Shiny and new looking. Uh, most of it's boring legalese. But at the bottom, there's a quote in fancy script. Lovely. Prevailing throughout society, honour, mercy, justice, truth. Cool. Cool. That'll well, click at some point. Right? <clears throat> so while we're at the front, can we can we have a look at the stegon? What, what, what's the, uh, the stegosaurus? The stegosaurus. Can we look at the stegosaurus on the left? <laughs> Absolutely. Wall? She's sitting in a relaxed pose in front of her word processor. She types a full transcript of the trial, and whenever the court takes a recess, she prints out what she's done. So there's a hard copy. At the moment, she's only got a small pile of transcript bits from earlier today, ten pages or so, sitting next to her. Okay. Are they kind of full of information? Can we just sit and read them? Or are they... You could, yeah. They're a basically word-for-word -word transcript of how things have been going so far. It's not a bad idea if you want to reacquaint yourself with the particulars of the case. Uh, maybe do you want to look around a bit more first? Sure. Let's do that. Okay. Oh, well, on that side of the room, uh, just past the stegosaurus is the judge's chamber, judge club. Oh, the secret judge room. A secret yes, judge room. Yes, the secret judge room. Yeah. The only thing marking this door is a small sign with the words private authorised access only. <laughs> yeah, you're not exactly authorised, but well, exceptions must be made. You try the handle, but you find it locked. Underneath the handle is a large keyhole. Key very clearly missing. Can we look through the large keyhole? Like the sleuth detectives that we are. <laughs> you absolutely can. Annoyingly, though, there's something blocking your view. There's a poster or something on the other side of the door, so you can't actually see into the room. However, if you squint, or let's say you look through, you see nothing, you give up, Nick, you take a go, mm -hmm. and you actually see that there are some teeny tiny letters very low on this back of poster. Okay. It seems to be a serial code or a label or something, and it certainly doesn't make sense. It's just the letter J... Then a sort of big space, like a tab-sized space. Mm -hmm. O-R-9. Then a huge space. 
then S, small space, C. Now, hmm. if we assume there are missing letters that are meant to be in those spaces, that mm -hmm. looks as if it could start with Jura 9. Who knows? We'll probably find out later. Let's keep having a look around. Shall we check out the defense's table? Is there anything on their table? On the table, it's pretty bare. The defendant, Waylon Havanos, is just sort of sitting there with his hands on the table, one of them reaching forward for a glass of water. The rest of the bench is pretty bare. Okay. But if you want to take a closer look at the people themselves... What's Waylon? Tell me about Waylon. Well, even though he's frozen, you don't want to get too close to him unless you have to. Yeah, you're not convinced he's a murderer, but he's still a professional boxer. You doubt he would need to stab someone to kill them, which is how this crime has apparently gone down. He's sitting tensely, hunched over the table, one hand resting on the table, one reaching for his glass of water. There's nothing particularly suspicious about his appearance. A couple of scrapes and bruises and a nose that looks like it's been broken more than once. Some knuckle calluses. Are we game to, like, check his pockets? You'd be a little bit nervous to do it, but you can stick a hand into his pocket. I stick a hand into his pocket. You... I drink his water. <gasps> I did That's it. much worse. Now he's going to kill us. He's frozen in time. He'll yeah, when, he, when he, he knows exactly how much water is in that glass, <laughs> he'll see that it's missing and he'll cotton on to our secret. I know, and if he, if he stabs someone, I'll know he's guilty. <laughs> All right. All right, successfully done. Uh, in his pocket... You find a wallet. It's just his wallet. You can flick through it, but it seems, seems to like check a out. Wallet. It yeah. doesn't, doesn't he not have a different name on his no. driver's license? He has a normal person's amount of cash. Does he have a note that says, I killed Shane Triscoll? <laughs> Who's his defense attorney? Yeah, what's his name? Phoenix. Defense lawyer, Phoenix. What does he look like? Well, his eyes are downcast. At first you think he's just looking down at his own knees in defeat, but when you follow his gaze, you actually see he's got a briefcase under his desk. Ooh. Shall I, we... I drink his water. Well, I was going to say open the briefcase, <laughs> oh, but sorry. sure. The judge has water too, if you'd like that. <laughs> Some I'm more legal water. I'm going to be so hydrated. <laughs> his briefcase is locked with a four-digit combination lock, two digits on each side. Anything in his pockets? No, nothing in his pockets okay. of interest. Can I crawl under the table? I don't think absolutely. There be... There's not much room. There's a lot of legs, and boxer legs are especially large. Yeah, but you can attempt. Excellent. I'm just under this table, Bill. Um, Is there anything under there? No. You should probably get out. No, I'm all right. All okay, right, wonderful. So you go under the prosecutor's bench to match. <laughs> yes, we are twins. We have to match <laughs> like that. That's how you live your life when you're a twin. It's a sacrifice, but it's worth it. <laughs> All right, moving across the For room, the in the middle, are we going rug or judge? Why don't we, oh, why don't we go to the, like... How about the judge's rug? <laughs> <laughs> How about we mirror what we've just done and check out the prosecutor? Oh, okay, yep. Miles, the prosecutor. So the prosecutor is standing midway through questioning Philadelphia Glenn on the witness stand. His face is stern, but kind of smug. He knows he's winning this thing. On the desk behind him are a bunch of exhibits relating to the case. Most prominently, there's the murder weapon, the huge machete. But there's also a handful of other things, bits and pieces from the scene of the crime, personal effects of the victim. You're reluctant to touch anything too much in case it messes with the case somehow. Yeah, I don't know how stopped time affects mm. the depositing of fingerprints. Not that checking fingerprints was on anyone's agenda in this case, apparently. That's true. What yeah. if we can check the machete for fingerprints later? We have a machete that hasn't been checked for fingerprints. And we have the defendant with his hand outstretched. <gasps> Probably an easy thing to get fingerprints from. Well, he was found holding it. I mean, what, what was he holding it yeah, with? Yeah, but who said that? Like, like we, we don't know who found him. Maybe you'll find that out later. Yeah, maybe. We should mm. check the stenographer's notes. Well, the stegosaurus's a, notes. In any case, we can put it in his hand and frame it. <laughs> Again, though... <laughs> So the machete is the biggest piece of evidence, and the rest are just sort of case knickknacks. Miscellaneous. So things that were found around. It was just the, the crime took place house. in some alley, so there's bits of alley debris. Yeah, bits of alley. Just sitting in there. <laughs> yeah. And stuff that was in his pockets at the time, the victim's pockets. Yeah. So. All right, lovely. Do you want to check out the jury? Jury? Yeah. Let's have a look at the jury. Some of them are glaring at Waylon, some are watching Philadelphia Glenn but there's a whole bunch that just aren't watching at all. One is yawning, just a huge gaping yawn. So we can get a saliva sample. And it's frozen there and it's pretty funny. There's another one that's <laughs> doing her makeup. She's just putting bronzer on her cheeks. And there's another Ooh. one that's got 
a magazine hidden in their jacket that they're trying to read while things are going. Nice. Bronzer. Is that, is that a powder? Bronzer is a powder. We got a powder. We, we can dust for prints. <laughs> With what? With bronzer. And the duster? That's no, the... the and the, the, whatever she's using she to is applying it with oh. a little makeup brush yeah. oh wow so we can we can brush for prints that said bronzer is an <laughs> awful dusting material um i have a degree yes. in forensic chemistry and i have done my research into <laughs> what powders can be used for fingerprinting bronzer was not on that list so it's a really good thing for fingerprinting um you can put them in a in a fuming box right you take whatever you need to check and you put it in a box and you actually you you vaporize super glue this is the thing it's cyanoacrylate lit fuming and they put in and you vaporize the finger uh, the the super glue and it sticks to all the stuff so you will get really clear fingerprints on objects i've done this before it's very the cool. more you know <laughs> i probably won't keep that in the episode it's just interesting facts about fingerprinting i like interesting facts okay so you're going to take the brush <laughs> i like your yawning jura <laughs> and stick it in the guy's mouth <laughs> <laughs> and we're not bronze the inside of a jeweler's mouth uh, but i'll take the bronzer okay you steal the lady's bronzer. Luckily, it doesn't seem to have any effect on her frozenness. Lovely. Someone else was reading a magazine? Yeah, someone had a magazine in their coat pocket that they were surreptitiously trying to read while the case went on. Can we check the magazine? It's painfully explicit, terrible dating advice. This is the special romance section of Jug's magazine. <laughs> ah. But the, the one about actual literal <laughs> pictures of water that was from the original. Okay, if, you haven't, if you haven't listened to episode one, go back and listen this to episode one. This is the one. episode with back references everywhere. Yeah, that's how it's going to go. Ding, ding, ding. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all right. So we have a magazine about dating advice. Uh, anything else interesting about these jurors? Nothing that you can notice. Should Check we out. have a look at PG? Yeah, let's have a look at Philly G. Philadelphia Glenn. Sitting there looking pretty calm. and He's dressed in formal clothes instead of his boxer shorts, but he... Is at least seven feet tall. He's still pretty oh, scary. He's a very tall man. He's insane. This is why he's so famous. But apart from a couple of old fight injuries, you also don't notice anything out of the ordinary about him. Anything in his pockets? You search his pockets and no. Do we check our prosecutor's pockets? You did not. Can I check prosecutor's pockets? Well searched. There is something in Miles Edgeworth's pockets. You find a folded piece of paper with a typed statement in his left suit pocket. During the trial, he did mention what's written on here. It's talking about how he'd been intending to call forward a witness from the audience who was in the courtroom today, Ooh. but she'd been stricken with an anxiety attack and was too afraid to come to the stand. Oh. To protect her identity, he'd simply called her JJ. Awesome. Good finding. Now, no indication... Other than the fact that it's a female, no indication of who JJ could be. I suppose not. You have a suspicion that they haven't worked very hard at creating an alias and JJ's probably her initials. Probably. So we need to find a JJ in the audience. I'm assuming no one's sitting in the audience with a name badge that says Jennifer No, Jones. no one seems to have a name tag on. Wait, are they still here or do they go home? Sick. I think they're still here. They're I think still they're here. just too they're scared around. to go yeah. onto the stand. Mm. Shall we go looking at the audience now, or do you want to finish off the... I don't uh, think we'll be able to find someone called JJ just by looking. Can we look at the audience? What do we see? There are dozens of people in these audience seats. None of them stands out, and you could search the pockets and bags of all of them, but do you know what you'd be looking for? Like a license that says... JJ. Jennifer Jones. Jasper Johns. Seems doable. All right, mm. I'll take the left side, you take the right side, and we'll... Well, not too far from your spot on the right side, you do find a woman who, when you go through her purse, her ID says Jasmine Jacobs on it. Jasmine Jacobs. You found your JJ. Tucked behind that ID in her enormous purse, you spot a piece of folded paper. Ooh. It's handwritten, bit messy, but it looks like the statement that she was planning to read before she had her anxiety attack and didn't want to come up. Awesome. Would you like to read it aloud? I would love to. I was in the neighbourhood, returning my some of his belongings, I was on foot because I'd had two glasses of wine and was afraid of getting a UI if I'd driven. I turned he corner from Park Boulevard into a little side street when I heard a crash. I ran towards it and that's when I saw Waylon Havanus fighting with the Anager, Triscoll. 
Perhaps they knocked over a mirror from a driveway because I saw everything in the reflection from it. I supposed that was the crash I heard. Anyway, Havanos pull out a huge knife and that's hen he did T. Killed him. I saw everything. There are missing letters. There are many missing letters. Shall we, and I should have been doing this the first time, write down those missing letters. So you Go. can start making a list of these. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Returning my sum of his belongings. So there's an error there, but I don't know which letter would be missing from my sum. I would have thought that's additional words. You would have been returning some of his belongings. Mm. That's an interesting one. Let's see what the rest are. I was on foot because I'd had two glasses of wine and was afraid of getting a UI. So we're missing a D. Yes. He corner, missing a T. Yep. Boulevard, we're missing the middle of the word boulevard, so it's an A. Mm hmm. Anager, so that's an M, M. that we're missing. Pahaz, a P, <laughs> everything, missing an E, Havanos, pull, missing an ED, and that's hen he did, so we're missing a W, and an I from it. <laughs> I saw every ing, so we're missing a TH. Okay, I have, ooh, ta I've got tampered. Yes, tamp -e And I've got with, something tampered with. Tampered with. Oh, wait, so did something miss an R that with. was missing? You did, yes. Where? Uh, so everything in the reflection from it, but it's just from it. So there was a missing R, which was for tampered. Okay, but what was tampered with? We've well, D, but... D could stand for defense. It's a capital D from DUI. So maybe it stands for the defense, which wouldn't make sense. Why would the defense tamper with something? Well, they are very bad at their job. But have we not missed something in the beginning? There I is. was have. in the neighborhood returning my sum of his belongings. Oh, returning my ex some of his belongings? So it's nothing to do with Waylon. I'm returning my ex some of his belongings. That's what she was doing. Ah. She was returning some of his belongings to her ex. So X. So that's before the D. Yeah, that's the first thing we've got. X D e tampered with. X D tampered with. Tampered. Oh, exhibit D. Exhibit, Exhibit D, D is tampered with. with. Oh, <gasps> brilliant. Okay. Well, let's... Well, we may as well start from the beginning. What's Exhibit A? The machete. And Exhibit B? Let's say the victim's shoe Exhi that fell off during the scuffle. Exhibit C? Some litter that was on the street at the time. Can we keep going? Can we Exhibit go to e, e? <laughs> There is no Exhibit E. It ends right there. I was lying when I said there were lots of them. Shut up. <laughs> All right, let's check out Exhibit D. All right, let's do it. What is Exhibit D? Exhibit D is the big round mirror that was found on the scene that JJ was talking about. Oh, the one that crashed. Yeah, she heard a crash and there was a mirror on the ground and she saw everything in the reflection of it, apparently. Oh. Mm. <laughs> so, can I, can I pick up the mirror? I mean... How Fingerprints and all that. Yeah, so let's okay. just have a look at this okay. mirror. How big is it, are we thinking? It is... What's a good size comparison? The inside of a wheel? The metal bit of oh, okay. a so wheel like size? Of like a rim. It's pretty it's like, decent size. Yeah, okay. It looks like one of those ones that from a parking garage is used so that cars coming so can out see can the see the traffic. Exactly. Got it. Do the you... only thing is, it's a bit weird. In the centre of the glass, there's a smaller circle about palm sized where there's no glass and at first glance it looks like it's been designed that way but mm. when you're looking for signs of tampering specifically you notice it does look more like that circle has just been very neatly smashed out now if you were going to tamper with a mirror why would you remove the center of it would you put something else in the center perhaps Something a... about this would have proven that from the angle she was at, she could she not have seen, have seen what it. was going on, say. Perhaps so. Hmm. And if I look in the mirror, do I see myself? Apart from a chunk missing from the middle, yeah. I have a chunk missing from my <laughs> middle? Hmm. Hmm. Is there anything else on that table of the same diameter of that internal smashing? No, not on that that you can see from the other exhibits. I'm going to put this on the back burner for a second and look around until we see some... There are still lots of, of things for you to look at. There are many things, many things. Where do you want to go? Uh, well, we've seen the prosecutor and the nosecutor. Do you want to check out the judge? Judge. He's not that surprising, really. He's got his long black robe. He's watching the proceedings with professional disinterest. 
He's got his little gavel and a glass of water in front of him. Oh, no, I drink the no, water. No, no, no. I spill the water before it can be drunk. You spit more water back in. No, you I pour, spill. You pour no, some water, water from Wayland's glass into the judge's Stop glass. Stop controlling me. Water goes everywhere. You've ruined everything. Yes, he has a glass of water. That's about it. He's got his little gavel, his little glass of water, his long black robe, no wig. His hair is naturally judge really? wig like. So That's a commitment to the role. It's pretty cool. Can we wear the robe? It's pretty hard. He is sitting there. You can't really take it all the way off. Okay. Does the robe have robe pockets? It does have robe pockets. Is there anything inside said pockets? Nothing of interest. Is there anything that isn't interesting inside these pockets? Lint. Is there a key lint in the lint that compartment? Lint spells. See, I'm referencing episode one again. Mm. Spoilers. If you haven't seen episode one, there's a key in the lint compartment. I think there was a battery in the lint compartment. Oh, I'm an idiot. Um, so the judge has nothing. Is there anything? He has nothing. It, does he have a gavel? He does. Gavel could, and glass. Could the gavel be used to gavel a hole out of a mirror? Would you like to do something to find out <laughs> if that's try. the case? Let's take the gavel. Let's take the gavel and see He's if not it, holding the gavel, so it is very easy to pick up and move. And see if it fits perfectly into the circle of the mirror. <laughs> you take the gavel over to the exhibits and you hold it up to the circular hole and it seems like it would fit perfectly. Someone's gaveled out the mirror? <laughs> and as you press them together, the mirrored surface reflects on some minute scratches on the side of the mallet. Oh, nice. And you realise that you look at those scratches and with the reflection from a certain angle, it looks like words. What do those words look like they would say? Happy birthday, June 6th. Your friend, Mikey R. All right, we have to find Mikey R. Surely he's in this courtroom. Surely. Can, there, I, can I check the jurors... Um, wallets? The way they're sitting the makes it a little bit tricky. You can search purses easily enough because they're not on the persons. What about... Oh, no. You can take a look. There are a couple of them that have really baggy pockets and it's mm -hmm. easy enough to get through. You don't see any Mikey R's there. No. What about in the audience? Takes you a while and there are about 17 Michaels, but none of them seem to be Mikey R's. Hmm. Do we know when the date of the incident is? I believe it occurred in February sometime. Okay. And today isn't June 6th either, is it? No. I reckon this is again. Let's just Still sit lots that to away look and keep rug. looking around. Rug yes, rug? the judge rug. The judge's rug. The rug on yes. the ground. Okay, on the floor, so what happens, what happens if I roll myself up like a sushi? You can succeed, and it's such a thick, plush rug, it's quite pleasant. Is there anything that has been revealed underneath said No, rug? there was nothing underneath it. You should probably look at the rug All itself. Right. You unroll yourself, and I'll roll myself up like a burrito. Much more successful. I applaud you. Good. Now I'll unroll myself, and we can look at the rug mm. to see what it looks like first. Most of it is a muted maroon colour, just for a nice classy splash to this boring room. Yeah. In its centre, there's a picture of the local faunal emblem, a baby cow. Aww. Please draw it. You want and me to draw it? Okay. <laughs> Hold on. We'll, we'll tweet it. We'll tweet it after. We'll tweet it when the episode comes out. Does this cow have a bell? Ding. No, oh, no. it does not. <laughs> it does have a huge tail, though, apparently. <laughs> um, how you or is that it lifting its leg? Because <laughs> it's only got three. It doesn't, doesn't. It doesn't look like a horse. <laughs> <laughs> That's the question I have. There you go. Okay, so we have a cow. So you've got the local fauna mm -hmm. emblem, this baby cow. Mm -hmm. and <laughs> Sorry, I hadn't looked at your cow. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like it looks like a cow made of duplo. That's what it looks like. Oh, that's exactly what it looks like. <laughs> Apart from this baby cow, there's also the area's local motto mm -hmm. written on this rug, which might be more important than the cow. <laughs> and what does it say? Why well, can't it just? It spot. says, "We entreat your loyalty, observance, neighbourliness, safety." Now, I'm just going to acrostic that for a second. It says, Waylands. It says Waylands. This conspiracy goes all the way to the top of the rug-making chain. <laughs> Not another well, rug conspiracy. Well, I mean, I mean, that was the case in the Speakeasy episode. Yes, in episode it was two, rugs. it was all about rugs. This is a, this is a, a case spanning decades, <laughs> back to the 20s. Wait. So you said Waylon. His name is Waylon, right? But there's an S. Yeah, so Waylon's... Maybe there's more words. Is Waylon's... Maybe Waylon has a baby cow. Oh. Maybe Waylon's baby cow. Waylon's cow. Wow. 
Wayland's baby Ma- cow. What's a baby cow? A piglet? A calf. calf. <gasps> Ooh, let's go check his calf. Can we roll up his socks and check his calf? You can roll up his pants and examine his calves, and on the back of his right calf is a tattoo. It says, I'm guilty. <laughs> Don't try. It looks like numbers representing his early match statistics. Ooh, nice. From what I googled about boxing scores, yep. what can happen is that you start with 10 points, and if you screw up, you lose points. Okay, lovely. In his first fight, this has got his first seven fights. Mm-hmm. With scores, his first fight, he got one point. In his second match, he got six points. Mm-hmm. Then three. Then one, two, three, four. So none of those exceptional scores. You can see why he might be a bit bitter about not getting much attention and investment put towards his career. He wanted yeah. to get a bit better than that. Now, just a question. I don't believe this will work because they're all very low numbers. Mm. They don't alphabetically work out, do they? That, that would be silly. No, A F C A. I, I can't think of a word starting with Afka. Afkabukud. Af- yeah, one, Kab-kud. two, three, four is not something no. you would normally see. In All right, so it's not going to be that. One, six, three, one, two, three, four. The other number we have is Happy Birthday on the sixth of the sixth. I don't know if that's related. Yeah. We also have. Uh, we need two sets of two numbers for the briefcase. Oh, that's true. But we have a lot of numbers. We have seven. It's not going to fit very well, is it? You do have seven numbers here. And there's also, because they are fights one to seven, there could be some relation to like one goes to mm. like one, one, two, six, three, three, four, one, five, two, six. Mm. Like there could be some connection there as well. What What are you thinking? I have that? no idea. These are just... I well, mean, six, six. I don't know what to do with that. Well, yeah. Is there a relationship between the numbers? Like... Two to six is It is three. not a number pattern. There's no maths okay. required. Well, let's, again, mm. let's stick let's this on a back it. burner and continue to explore. We haven't been to the jury's room, and that's mostly it. And we haven't checked under this big, long, black carpet. But I'm assuming... Mm. Well, I'm assuming that's not super relevant, but why don't we check? Is the black carpet interesting? Mm. Long, black, dirty, faded from people walking on it. No interesting patterns. It's not like a rug. Can, can I pull it up? Mm. Yeah, can we pull it up? You can, I roll can it? try, but I roll it's, myself a sushi. It's, I'm a sorry, sushi. this one's nailed to the floor. It's a permanent fixture. Mm. Yeah. All right. Um, do you want to check out the jurors? De- What's that word? What do they do? Deliberation room. Yes. This door is plain, except for the placard telling you that it's the way to the deliberation room. You try the handle. It doesn't move. Underneath it is a small keyhole. Sadly, no key. Mm. Okay. Now we know the the stenographer has like ten pages of notes of previous deliberation. How do we how do we go about going through this? Surely I'm not going to ask you to read ten notes of ten pages. Of I have not written them exactly, but I can give you an abridged give us version. A, an abridged version. You read through to refamiliarize with the case. So Shane Triscoll was the millionaire boxing manager who represented both Waylon and Philadelphia. Philadelphia yep. was the star client, whereas Waylon was only okay. It's alleged that Waylon knew about this and was consumed by jealousy. His poor results were due to Triscoll favouring Philadelphia. Waylon confronted Triscoll, leading to his murder. The defence insists that the rumours of jealousy aren't true, pointing out that Philadelphia actually lost a couple of matches right before the murder, so it wouldn't make sense for Waylon to be jealous. They also suggested that there may have been some mafia connection, since police uncovered phone records stating that Triscoll had made a phone call to infamous underworld figure Mikey Ragoletto the day hey, before the murder. It's a rug-based dynasty! <laughs> However, the defense attorney did have no explanation for why Waylon was arrested at the scene of the crime with the machete in his hand. As you read, you also can't help but notice something that you thought was like illegal for stenographers to do. Are she making notes in the margins? No, there are typos. Ooh, missing letters again? No, look, they just... Additional letters. Sometimes? Sometimes it's just bad spelling as well. On the first four pages, not a single page is mistake-free. So on the first page alone, there's a mistake in the bottom left corner where it's just she typed the word prosecution, but her finger clearly slipped, so she wrote prosecution. Then in the very centre of the page, she spelled Triscoll's name wrong. And oh, there's another one in the bottom right corner, misspelling February. And about ten lines above that, Boxing with two X's. Now, is that ten lines above February higher than Triscoll or lower than Triscoll? Pretty if close. You were to overlay the page. Pretty close. So, what was that? Boxing. With yeah, two boxing X's. with two X's. 
And that's just the first page. Ugh. Um, Do we need to go through and write down all the mistakes? Yeah, shall we? So on page two, there are another four mistakes. There's one in the bottom left corner, Mm -hmm. middle of the top line, bottom right corner. And then a whole line in the center of the page has accidentally been strike through. Oh. Mm -hmm. Page three only has two mistakes, middle of the top line and middle of the bottom line. Mm -hmm. Page four, three mistakes, top left corner, bottom left corner, and bottom right corner. Okay. Okay, Are are these braille numbers? No, that wouldn't make sense because one has a big line through the middle. Does that t- spell I connected something? the dots. Something but A-I-L. Did you connect the dots what is correctly? This? Yeah, so for two, yeah, two looks like A because it was bottom left, bottom right, the top with a line through the middle. On That's the first page, there was a mistake in the bottom left corner, yep. then the right in the centre, and yep. then the bottom right corner, yep. and about ten lines above that. N. Like a nail. It's a nail. So N, she- A, page three, top and bottom. That's an I. Page four, top left, bottom left, bottom right, L. N-A-I-L. Yeah. Beautiful. Nail. Now... Can we check, to, to start with perhaps, the stenographer's nails? Her nails appear normal. It doesn't say nails. Is there a nail somewhere? Is one of the pieces of evidence a nail? No. Um, okay, so... No, we have to find a nail. What about the, the rug was nailed to the ground, right? The black rug. The black carpet. Does that have nails? It does have nails. Is there an exposed Lots of them. nail? You can take a look around and have a bit of a jiggle. Jiggle away. Mm. Eventually, you find one that feels a little bit looser than the others. Pick. You jiggle, 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 jiggle. <laughs> jiggle, jiggle. And after a while, it comes out. This one is in very bad shape. You can see why it wasn't sitting right. It's mm. not even straight. It's got a bunch of little grooves running down it, and then the end is totally twisted at a right angle. I wonder if this may be a key. Operate as a key. As a, let's just yeah. push it through the big keyhole into the judge's area. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Judge, judge, judge keyhole. Just, just judge keyhole. Just bit more jiggling. You do manage to use it as a makeshift nice. key and it unlocks the door. Swings open, you step inside. It's very bare, just a desk and a large leather chair, long poster on the back of the door, but it's just a picture that matches the one on the rug, the baby cow. Cool. The only thing there is sitting on the table is a long stick with a sort of plastic hook at the end. I like stick hookies. On the poster, can we see any more letters or just no, the nothing J tab space O R nine space S? That's it. Yeah, actually, yeah. So looking from this side, what's it a poster of? It's exactly the letters. same as the one on the. Oh, that was just written on the back. It almost looks like a barcode. Oh, okay. Hang on, just but barcodes are terrible. We find, found something during nine, right? No. No, we you didn't. Were oh, we totally didn't. guessing that. We were this totally because guessing. it looks like the that word Jura Nine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so before we go to the plastic hook, which is obviously the most obvious thing in this room. Sorry, there was like just a chair. It's just a chair. Chair table. No, nothing in the upholstery. Nah. Nothing under the cushion. Mm. Um, you have your room item. The room item that we found mm. is this plastic hook on a stick. Mm. So, can we do the thing where I like dance out the middle of the stage, and then you like. Oh, they like, hook you by the neck. And, yeah, and it's not quite you. that sort of hook. It's actually yeah. quite small, almost like for grabbing at something, and then you would use the stick to pull. The flag. flag. All right, so we go. One out. might say it's an we unfurling device. You were aware of the flag, right? We were just joking around about everything. Yes, else. yes, of yes. <laughs> um, we go over the flag. We use the flag. We unfurl the flag. We're running out of time. We're taking a long time to do this sorry. room. Um, flag it up. You get the flag unfurled the whole way. It reveals a flag you don't recognize. Maybe it's just the local council's flag. Sure. Who knows what their local flag looks like? <laughs> Probably looks like a picture of Wayland's car. <laughs> uh, what does it look like? From left to right, there are some yellow stars, some blue and white stripes, then a pair of lions and a pair of eagles. So everything that you would ordinarily find on a flag just all mashed together in an ugly way. All right, lions and eagles. They're adorable. <laughs> oh, you've drawn them. Well, yeah, I mean, I know you had to go at my cow, but I'm not <laughs> no, they're much. Up. They're much better. Your Black lions uh, are someone lions putting eagles. toothpicks in Friday. Lions eagles. Lions eagles. Lions I eagles. did that in episode eight. I'm not throwing back to previous puzzles. <laughs> uh, star stripes, lions eagles. That doesn't help me. That I can think of. Fair enough. We don't have a key. We need a key for the jewelry room. Mm. Now we're stuck. Again. And to solve a murder. You do still have some numbers and anything else that you haven't used yet that you've. So found we stuff have with? the 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 um the constitution. With something that's mm. prevailing throughout society, honor, mercy, justice, and truth. One, two, three, four. Honor, mercy, justice, truth. As a as a acronym, that doesn't seem to mean anything, right? P T S H M J T. 
isn't a thing. Mm. So, and we've already used that sort of idea of what, a puzzle. Prevailing throughout society. Is there something, society, is the constitution related to society? I uh, guess. I mean, this is from the constitution. It seems odd to be self-referential. How many words are there? One, the two, thing. three, four, five, six, seven. Seven. Seven, like his seven guns. His seven guns. His seven <laughs> matches. We have points. So the, we'll go word by word and take the letter that corresponds to his points in that match. All right. So one is... is P. The first letter of yeah. prevailing is P. Six. We're looking for the sixth letter of throughout. One, two, three, four, five, six is G. G. PG. Ooh, that's three, like three, Philadelphia one, two, Glenn. Three. Uh, society would be the C. Three, yep, the three. C of society. Now we uh, want the first letter four, of, the, one. of H, so that's honour. <laughs> you heard me. The first you letter of me. H. The first letter of H is honour. We need the second letter, so it's E of mercy. mercy. Yep. Third letter of, of justice is S. Yep. And, oh my God, we're going to have to strip him naked. PG chest. <laughs> I told you we had to look for other so body parts. Look, yeah, it's a body part from Bonanza. All right, let's uh, look Oh, but at, no, this is PG now. Yeah, let's look at Philadelphia Glenn's chest. You carefully unbutton his shirt to look oh, no, at his... Oh, sorry. I meant the small box he had next to him. Oh, no. <laughs> we unbutton his shirt. You carefully unbutton his shirt to get to his enormous chest. And sure enough... Seven feet wide. There's something here. A tattoo. Ooh. Not at all like Waylon's tattoo, though. It looks brand new. Still a bit red around the edges. In black ink and all caps, you have some letters. It says, you're right, okay, but you are for your... So just, you are right, and then O, and then a space between the O and the K for some reason. Do these possibly fit with the weird poster we found? Yes, it does, yeah. because the U-R fits in Jura, mm -hmm. so that's the first gap. So J-U-R-O-R, -R, so that's Juror 9, mm -hmm. I was so right. Then there's a large gap for the word right, so it'd be right, sock, S Blank is the O, mm. C, K. So we, we like smosh them together. We get Jura 9, right sock. I find Jura 9 and I check out their left sock. Do they have a tattoo on their calf? I check out their chest. Yes, but it's a coincidence. We're running out of time. I check out their right sock. Why are we running out of time? Well, not really, but I'm just creating a sense of urgency. It's pretty weird to be taking off their shoe and sock. But Justice. I suppose no weirder than undressing the boxes to look at their tattoos. Exactly. You peel it down. As you do, something falls out. A key, a key, a key, a key. A small key. Oh. What do you do with the key? Let's go into the judge's room. We've already been in the judge's room. Does it fit in the judge's room? We've been in there. You can put the key in the judge's room, I guess. <laughs> it does fit. It's not bigger than the room itself. <laughs> All right. Jury's room. The door to the deliberation area opens. Should we go inside? You head into this deliberation room, and inside, there are a couple of things that catch your eye a little bit. It's mostly just a long table with 12 chairs, smattering of boring-looking papers, but there is one that catches your eye. Mm. It's printed on light blue paper instead of the usual white, and it's handwritten. It seems like it must have been left in here by mistake. There's also a little bathroom attached. Oh, nice. Uh, what does the note say? It looks like it was written by the defense attorney to a significant other and it somehow got mixed up in his <sighs> trial notes. It says, Hey baby, I'm tanking the case. I'm <laughs> deliberately letting him get arrested. Doesn't that turn you on? It says, Happy birthday, darling. First day of the year, first day of the rest of our lives. So that's we one, two separate one. Birthdays. So we've got one, one, we've got six, six, and we've got a briefcase. And we now know that the defense attorney is not going out with the judge. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Go on, please. One one six that's, six. That's it. I got nothing more to say. All right. So the so the so the defense attorney's is the defense attorney's girlfriend's birthday or boyfriend's didn't specify. True. Is the first of the first, and the first day of the rest of their lives. Mm. The judge's birthday is the sixth of the sixth. Both of these fractions equal one. Case closed. <laughs> you win. One, which looks like the shape of a machete. Done. Um, so that's it. That's it. That's the note we found. Yeah. Do if I hold it up to the, the light, there's not like extra writing. No, if I set it, it on fire. I'm sorry. <laughs> what about in this uh, bath there's a bathroom? There is one very interesting thing. On the sink, there's a small bottle of talcum powder. Dun, 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 We're dun, dusting dun. for All right. prints. I take... The Wait. Mm. Can I try 1166 on the briefcase? Oh, yeah! Mm. Or 0101 if the first, first of the first. Maybe 1166 is better. 
The code 1166 works. The briefcase clicks open. You eagerly stare at the contents, and it contains only two things. A wristwatch and a mobile phone. What's the time on the wristwatch? Is it the real time? It seems accurate. Okay, good. Um, (laughs) What was the other thing Uh, I found? Hang on, hang on. How are we determining what accurate time is? Good point. Do I check my watch? Oh, what does my watch say? I have a fundamental question about the magic of this situation. Mm. Is the wristwatch ticking? It's not that kind of wristwatch. It doesn't have a second thing. So you can stare at it for a couple of minutes to see if the minute hand eventually starts ear, moving. You can't hear anything. It's yeah, modern. Yeah. Oh, that's true. Uh, okay, so it's... Are you really going to waste valuable oh, minutes okay, on okay. this? Questioning okay, we have, reality? We have a watch. Accurate so we have a time. watch that has an accurate time. What was the other thing, sorry? Yeah. A phone. A phone. I pick up the phone. <laughs> I try and unlock said phone. I'm assuming it's a smartphone. Yes. It's 2017, Daddy. You Come on. Try to unlock it. Does it have a bell? Yep. Go on, please. <laughs> The wallpaper on the phone is a picture of Waylon, so you assume the phone's his, mm-hmm. but it needs a four-digit password to enter it. I look a little bit closer at that wristwatch. What's on the back of it? The back of it is engraved with the defense lawyer's name. What do we call him? Phoenix? Phoenix. And a message. It says, regards your pal Mikey. Friggin' Whoa. Mikey Ragoletto giving everybody gifts. All right. Maybe he's a nice guy. So, so Jimmy Ragoletto thought, hey... What two things would fight really well? Two roosters. Mikey Ragoletto is all caught up in the boxing world. They're angry rug men, Billy. <laughs> angry rug- just, they just like fights. They just like fights is what they like. They like fights and rugs. So this is a present. The watch is a present from, from Mikey. Seems like the it. Mike, yeah. And also conspiracy. the judge obviously has received a gavel from Mikey yes. Ragoletto. Oh, man, Mikey. He's planned both sides. Well, they're not, the judge isn't on the side. But he does make the decision. So there you go. Not only that, you had things like that flag looked brand new. That yeah. ornamental rug was pretty nice. But then the mm. ornamental rug is helping us prove his innocence. Interesting. So maybe there's a secret mm. ragoletto. I guess we got to keep going. Maybe there's a jammy. A, 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 maybe there's a Mikey jammy Rugaloo. Rugaloo. <laughs> right. out from the shadows. <laughs> um, All right. So what do we have? What do we have? Well, this watch we know is a present. And it sells the time. We have uh, mm-hmm. the phone, which we don't have a code to unlock yet. Yeah, we've got a phone that needs four numbers. We have that. We have the flag. We have with, the talcum powder now, so we can dust stars. for we prints. We can dust for prints. Well, should we just do that? Yeah. Tell me your plan. So, first, what we do is we find Mikey's water. No, no, no. no that, that's not a character who's in this room. Ignore me. <laughs> first thing we do is we get, we get the machete. Yep. And we, and we tiddly dust down that dang, dang machete. With the talcum powder and the and the thing from the bronzer, the bronzer brush, brush, the, the makeup brush, brush, yeah, makeup brush and the and the talcum powder. We we see if we can find fingerprints on the machete. You succeed. One would almost think you'd have professional training. Indeed. <laughs> you have some fingerprints on it now. Do okay. we want to now get? We, we everybody has a glass. People have glasses of water which they would have touched. They have my fingerprints all over them. <laughs> you ruined the case. <laughs> Okay, I wiped. I take the glass. Of water, <laughs> By I take the glass astonishing of water. coincidence, you grab them in completely different spots. As that, as twins, I know your fingerprints <laughs> like the back of my hand, print. like the front of your so, hand. So I, I know twins I can don't just, work that way. I can just like yeah, whatever, easy, easy. Interesting fact about fingerprints: fingerprints are genetically determined, <laughs> mm. but identical twins do not have identical fingerprints because the individual um, small aspects of fingerprints are determined by pressure like literal like pressure in the fluid in the womb so because uh, identical twins have the same genetic base for their fingerprints but experience different minute changes of pressure in the womb they will not have matching fingerprints isn't that really cool uh, yes sorry irrelevant uh so we use their water to get fingerprints from so who do you want waylon waylon do waylon's fingerprints match the machete fingerprint you can successfully use the talcum powder and makeup brush to get fingerprints off Waylon's glass. It's surprisingly clear. You compare, and they are identical. Oh. <laughs> this is not helping. I think he did it. <laughs> All right, he's done it. Let's go. So he was... He, he did was have... It is his holding, machete. He was holding the machete. Or they made him touch the machete. So what do we have? Can you give me a rundown? No, I don't know what we have. We have a flag, we have a phone. Ooh, ooh, can I fingerprint his phone to see what the passcode is? See where his fingers press. I mean, his fingers have been on everything. All over the phone, it is a touch phone. Dang. What do we need to do now? You need to unlock that phone. Where do we get a code for the phone? Okay, so we've got... There were no numbers on the watch. No numbers on the watch. 
Well, except for the numbers on the watch. <laughs> they, tell the, they help you tell the time. Other than the many numbers on the watch, there are no numbers on the watch. What haven't we used? What haven't we used? We haven't used the, the flag. flag. Oh, the flag. That's because the flag. Oh, four oh, 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 yeah, we have. A- how many How many stars are there? How many stars? There are five stars. Five, five stars. stars. How many stripes? Four. And then there are two and two. Can we put in the code 5422 two into the phone that B longs to <laughs> way long? You make it to the phone's home screen. And what useful action could you do with it? Uh, check his photos. Wait. Does he have a photo of a dead body? No. <laughs> with a hat, with a like, little note underneath that says... Can we check his calls? No. Who's he been calling? Oh, who's he been calling? You begin searching through his calls, his messages, all that sort of stuff. Yeah, can we check his... Vo- Does he have any voice messages? You do spot a single missed call from the afternoon of the murder just before it happened, and they Ooh. did leave a message. <gasps> what does the message say? It was from Philadelphia Glenn. Hey, it's Phil. I guess you're on your way to meet Shane already. Good. You won't regret doing this. We can always get another manager, and trust me, I'm good for the 50 grand. My friend Mikey's sending it through to me this weekend after I make sure his bets come through the way he wants. Don't worry about anything. He promises he won't let anything get traced back to me, so that means you'll be in the clear. Mikey's got a lot of friends. Whoever he picks as a scapegoat, they'll have no chance. Oh no! Oh no! So he did murder him. He murdered, he straight up murdered um, Trisky McTriscus. But on the behest of a mafia boss and th- with a plan that also involved Philly G. Recall that the person for, that someone mentioned earlier in the case that Triscoll had had some calls to Mikey R, head of mafia. Oh, really? So I'm thinking what happened here. You might have noticed Philadelphia needed to make sure some of Mikey's bets came through the way he wanted. Yeah, he's throwing fights. And he had just lost a couple of fights. He had mm. just lost a couple of fights because he threw them. Ooh. And I think Triscoll found out about it yes. and found out who was making him do it. That's true. And then Triscoll was like, hey, Mikey, stop messing with my boys. Boxing is the noble sport. And the, 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 no, the beautiful science. Boxing is a beautiful science and you're ruining it with your, with your match fixing. And Mikey said... Hey, don't even worry about it. I won't murder you at all. See ya. And then he didn't murder him. Except he did. And so he said that Philadelphia Glenn, if you mu- get him murdered, yeah, I'll, give you I'll, I'll, give, I'll make you totally safe. And then Philadelphia Glenn said, all right, I don't want to kill him, but I know that Waylon's got some jealousy beef with him. Yeah, so he set Waylon up to do the murder, pretending that Waylon would be protected. He's like someone else with a scapegoat. Maybe he did maybe think he didn't know. that... Waylon would be protected as well, but Mikey R didn't care about Waylon, so yeah. he said, "Cool, as long as Philadelphia Glenn's in the clear, I'm happy." Yeah, crazy, and that's it. And then he rigged the whole case. He got a judge that he knew. He got a defense attorney that he knew. He made a rug that gave us clues to solve this puzzle. This was just all presents. This whole courtroom is a monument to their successful scam. Yeah. Oh. So we did it. He, th- yeah, we solved it. I mean, he did actually. I mean, he did murder a guy for the promise of money. So I'm happy to let him get convicted for this murder. But I'd like to make sure Philly. But how am I going to? Well, I have to take this evidence to as, someone better because obviously <laughs> this courtroom is full of Mikey R supporters. Well, the thing is, as you finish debating this message oh, amongst yourselves, <gasps> you're if you're not mistaken, the judge has moved a little bit. Uh And the prosecutor's arm isn't quite where it was a second ago. And the defense attorney blinks. You're standing in the middle of the courtroom with the defendant's phone in your hand. So I think you'd better decide what you're doing awfully quickly. I put the phone to my ear and I say, Oh, sorry, I just seem to have appeared magically in the courtroom. I'd best be off. Uh, Sorry about this, guys. Sorry, I'm just... (laughs) It's just an important call. What you'd better do is find out if you've got any friends in this courtroom. Do I have any friends in this courtroom? Is anyone on your side? Okay, the the stenographer. The stenographer wrote us a note. The stenographer hid a message in their notes to help us solve this puzzle. The stenographer is our friend. I throw the phone to the stenographer. No, I don't. Yeah, I mean, the stenographer might be your friend, but they also don't have much power, do they? The judge is not our friend. No. The, de- the prosecutor. Prosecutor did nothing wrong. Yeah. He was just prosecuting a murderer who I, had all the evidence against him. I, I throw, I give the prosecutor the phone with the message ready. I put it out like, right, like in his, on his, in his hand, in his pocket, put it in his pocket, put it in his pocket. Is, is he moving now? Is he looking at us while very, we're talking about this? This is all happening very slowly. Oh, it's starting right, to okay. recover in we slow motion. We drop it in his pocket and we 
we we start the what message we... playing so that he'll be interrupted by the message playing. That that is a good idea. Yeah. Okay. And you race back to your seats. And we yes. race back to our seats. Your plan goes off without a hitch. Hooray! We did it. Your plan goes off without a hitch, and his questioning when he comes back to life is interrupted by the sound of Philadelphia Glenn's voice coming from his pocket. Philadelphia Glenn on the stand freaks out. And the <laughs> Why court, is my shirt unbuttoned? The court goes into uproar. Oh yeah, people's pants are lifted up, people's shoes are off. This is a mess. But you have succeeded in getting that evidence out there. And now everyone will know exactly how horribly deep this conspiracy goes. Oh, beautiful. We did it. We did it. And he was guilty the whole time. Yeah, he was guilty. But, but so, so many people. more people, so people were guilty. More. The Ragalettos have plagued this city for decades. <laughs> I was so happy that you started bringing up references before I started bringing <laughs> yeah, up references. Yeah, that was lovely. That was really fun. <laughs> that was good. Yes, and congratulations to us. We did it. Well we done. Did. And you did it in such an amount of time. Your time was? 68 minutes and 42 seconds. Yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> I like it. Good job. You just got to react like the time was set at the time. Oh, I see. Pretend we have a robot These non-escapes assistant. are always a bit trickier when you're not just trying to mm. get your way out a door. Yes, right? Because you have to... Finding uh, an exit is, is quite... Like, it's a clear goal. And this one is kind of like, what do we need? Like, what do we're, we need? We need yeah. to prove this guy this... innocent. And he's just guilty and guilty. And guilty, he's and so guilty, guilty. And guilty. The story just has to progress a lot more slowly because <laughs> mm. for an escape room, it's just cool. Door, that is your intro. Yeah. Get to that door. So this you're is done. nice. You have to go. That was, that was really mm. fun. Did was you good. enjoy yourself? I loved it. I, I Did very much. You stop feeling terrified quickly. Uh, well, yeah, but every time he got more guilty, I was like, we're going. We're going in the wrong. We're doing the opposite of what yeah, we were trying to do. This was a completely open-ended thing, and you're making every wrong choice. Oh. Well, lovely. That was very fun. Mm. Thank you for coming on. Thank I, you for I, having thank me. Thank you so Glad much. You had a fun time. Hey, it's Bill from the future. I'm just interrupting to mention a couple other ways you can follow the podcast. We have a Facebook page, which is facebook.com/slash escape this podcast. We're also on Twitter at esk this podcast or, or you can send us an email at escape this pod at gmail.com if you're looking to help support the show the best way is to jump onto apple podcasts and leave us a review otherwise just tell a friend try and get someone to listen to it and show that you have very good taste in podcasts all right i'll get out of your hair and let you finish off the episode bye Uh, Danny, would you like to finish off the episode with a clue, with a with a hint of what our next episode will be? Episode 13 is uh, it has a special place in my heart because it is my life ambition to be the best in this area. Piracy. You made it through the bad times, you made it through the good, you always knew you could.